Hey, what's up everybody? Today we are looking a little bit blue, but we're not feeling blue. We're not sad because look at this. We have this beautiful blue Dodge Challenger Scat Pack wide body. Yes, it's going to be fun today. So why is the Scat Pack Widebody so cool? Well, have a look. I don't know about you, but I think this thing looks pretty damn sexy, just standing still without moving. At the front, you have the coolest halo lights, and on either side, it looks like you have intakes, kind of like the Hellcat, but these are plugged, but they do light up around the outside. They look like they go all the way through. Big, massive hood, you have functional air intakes on either side, a big scoop. Check out this huge front lip spoiler, something kind of like right out of a, a race car. Along the side, it gets more interesting because you have these wide fender flares and they're needed to house these massive 305 tires on here. These are all seasons. You can go for summer tires for about 600 bucks as an option, but regardless, it comes with 305s, 20 inch by 11 inch wheels. And I love how the wheels look. These ones are, uh, they're kind of a flat black finish and they're very deep they have a deep uh, inset so they're kind of like a deep dish wheel in behind there standard Brembo brakes front and back and then of course you have this color I'm partial to blue my favorite color but it looks so hot with the black wheels and the black accents and if you come around the back you have a black racing stripe this has the scat pack lip spoiler you have LED tail lights dual exhaust and of course check out how wide this rear end looks it's just tough. The inside of the Scat Pack is very user-friendly and quite comfortable. Uh, starting from the driver's seat, these seats are standard heated, and these are the cloth ones. You can get uh, perforated leather if you want the uh, cooled seats or ventilated seats. You can get that as an option, but standard heated seats, heated steering wheel. This is a leather wrap steering wheel with a flat bottom on that. The driver's seat has a power forward and back, yeah, but the recline is manual and the passenger seat is full manual. Now, when you are buying a Challenger, you are not buying it for carrying people in the back seats. I'm not even gonna hop back there and show you. Uh, that is for a pinch only, you know, to put someone back there. They basically have to have uh, toothpick legs to fit back there, but that's no surprise. That's always been the case with the Challenger. And once again, it's all about the driver, isn't it? So up front and center, you have a seven inch TFT display flanked by two analog gauges. They're retro looking. I like the front display because you can see all your pertinent information, including the performance pages, which we'll get to in the center screen as well. I like it that you can actually put the, the uh, speedometer on there to have big, big numbers. Good for people with uh, aging eyes like myself because the actual analog gauge, the numbers and the font is quite small. Uh, so that is a nice thing that you can use on that. Standard is an 8.4 inch Uconnect system and you can get it with or without navigation. This one is equipped with navigation. I've said this for years, this Uconnect system and the latest ones especially are the, one of the best and most intuitive systems out there. They're so easy to use. Yes, they look quite simple, but the graphics are good. And it's just, they're just so configurable. You have a dock system down below, kind of like you have a tablet and you can configure your pages however you want. Uh, this does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And also it has a whole bunch of other things, which we'll have to start the car to see them. So let's start it up here. Oh yeah, that sounds good, that 392. And as you can see, we have that dock system and you have apps. In the app section, you have an SRT dashboard and you have also in apps, you also have uh, SRT mode. So let's say in the dashboard, we can go into performance pages. Now that takes a little bit of time to load, but once it's loaded, you can see uh, your gauges. You can see in digital form that is, and you can also see uh, a graph of your horsepower and torque in real time. It records everything for you as well. You have a uh, line lock, which we will try out in a second. You have launch mode. Um, it really, it's kind of like playing a video game, but you are in a real car. 
that all comes standard with the Scat Pack. And of course, you do have a backup camera on here. If you're a fan of drag racing, you're gonna love these performance pages. Seriously, now I think it's time to go for a drive. Oh yeah. Since we're already in the SRT dashboard, uh, we might as well just check out this little thing called activate line lock. So what line lock is, is that it separates the rear brakes from the front brakes, allowing you to, to basically do a brake stand without wearing out your rear brakes. So we are going to hit that. It says apply brake pressure. All right, vehicle must be in forward gear. Here we go. There we go. Whoa, yeah. A little bit of uh, smoke action there. Not too shabby, I'd say. It sure makes it easy to do that, that's for sure. Man, oh man, that's super, super simple. So, what's under the hood? Well, it's a 6.4 liter Hemi, and it puts out, yeah, it's not a Hellcat 717 horsepower, but it puts out a very, very good 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque. And so it makes a run to 60 miles an hour in just about four seconds, which is pretty quick. A quarter mile is around 12 seconds. So uh, it's matched with eight speed automatic transmission, or you can get a six speed manual. Now the eight speed auto comes standard. And if you want to opt for the manual transmission, you will have to uh, pay about a thousand dollars extra for that option. It's too bad this didn't have the manual. It would be really fun to try that out. But man, oh man, you can really, really get those tires nice and sticky. And of course, you're gonna wear them out pretty quick too, but hey, this is a fun car. Listen to all those rocks it's picking up now. Also from this dashboard, you can go into launch control, activate it, activate it. It'll launch at 2300 RPM. Okay, there we go, woo. We still had some wheel spin there, a little bit, but it actually managed it quite well. This has all the little toys, and what's nice is, if you like to do a lot of launches, you don't even have to actually go through the menu system in the, in the actual SRT part. You can actually just hit the launch button. There is a launch button right here. I like it, I like it a lot. This really, is such a, a surprise to drive. When I picked this up, I was like, oh, you know, it's not a Hellcat, and it's got an auto transmission, it doesn't have a manual. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. But man, has my mind ever been swayed after driving this for a few days. Uh, it's just, we talked about how easy it is to drive. Yes, that's one thing. We're in sport mode, but if you go into auto mode, it's pretty docile, and even in sport mode, it's not that crazy of a car to drive on the street at all. Uh, it's a little bit rumbly, so you can hear the exhaust here, and uh, it can drone a little bit, especially on the, on the highway, but uh, you know, you are buying some good American muscle, so be aware of that. So when you get the wide body, not only do you get a wider vehicle with those big flares and the big wheels, but you also get a, a different suspension and it's an adaptive suspension. And you can definitely tell the difference when you put it into the sport mode. You put it in the sport mode, it changes the transmission, of course. The engine really, really wakes up, but that suspension really uh, stiffens up. It adapts to uh, everything, it gives you a lot of good feel. And the nice thing about it though is that this car, being not a small car, it's a big vehicle, uh, it corners pretty flat. There, you know, especially in sport mode. And that's very reassuring when you're driving uh, this big, heavy uh, American car. You know what's funny, when I was filming this vehicle, uh, there's a gentleman that came up on his brand new uh, Harley Davidson with, in a similar color uh, to this uh, Challenger. And he went, pulled up his phone and showed me, he goes, hey, guess what? You know, it's like, he owns a Hellcat. And he was so enamored with this Scat Pack wide body. He's like, wow. Like this is, I'd, I'd buy this, he says, you know, and he just loved it. He's like, wow, it's got, it's got everything my car has. And that's the thing, yes. The, the only thing that he mentioned that he liked better on his car, or that was different, is 
his hood. He had a different hood than this, but other than that, he goes, nope, those are the same tires, those are the same wheels, it's like same everything. And I'm like, he, he even looked underneath, he, that, that's the same exhaust even. So uh, he was so impressed, and he, of course he loved the color. We, we took a bunch of pictures, and you know what? When he bought his, which is the 2019, after all said and done, he said he paid basically about almost $100,000 for his uh, Hellcat. Yeah, 100K. So this is why this is so appealing, this Scat Pack wide body. You see the Scat Pack starts at just under $47,000 and the wide body is $8,000 more, uh, just under $55,000 and that's a lot less than uh, $100,000 in my books. Yes, you are, you're also getting uh, over 200 horsepower less, but you know what? Does everybody need over 700 horsepower? Almost 500 is pretty darn good. Listen to that. Oh, we, we've exceeded our speed uh, that, that's set on here. I gotta change that, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, yeah, so this is, there's a lot of value in this Challenger, seriously. Yes, if you're buying this, it is a toy. You are not buying this for utility. You're not buying this for practicality, moving the kids around, moving people around, none of that. This is a toy and a damn good one, I must say. It's just so easy to drive. We are going up a mountain road right now, a twisty mountain road. I'm using, it's basically the weight of my toe is on the accelerator pedal right now. And we are cruising effortlessly up this mountain doing uh, 100K. It's, it's not even breaking a sweat. And yes, this will suck back fuel if you're doing a lot of launches and warming up those tires and drag racing. But under normal use, I've had a little mixture of both. Uh, I'm averaging 15.4 liters per 100K. That is absolutely acceptable. And you know what? There are so many other vehicles out there that are quicker to 60, quicker in the quarter mile, have a higher top speed. You know, like take for example, the new Tesla Model S Plaid that is coming out. That thing is supposed to do zero to 60 in under two seconds and the quarter mile in the nine second area. That is insane. However, this is my opinion, it's nowhere near as cool as this wide body Challenger. I'm serious. There's just something to be said about the raw sound of a V8 the look of a muscle car like this. Let's go around, look at this tight quarter. Impressive, man. It doesn't hurt that you have 305 uh, series tires on here. They're huge. They're monster meats on here. You know, the turning radius isn't actually that bad for something this size. Uh, I gotta turn that speed limit excess thing off. It's kind of bothering me now. Here's a good example. We are going around a real tight hairpin turn. Let's see. The brakes are excellent on here, this one's. Oh man. Yeah, it's a really nice, uh, stiff platform and those those tires suspension everything works very well together you would honestly be surprised for uh, for a large vehicle like this it's great it's great I want one I want one if you enjoyed this scat pack wide body video make sure give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't it really helps the channel out especially to help try to pay for the fuel for cars like this where uh, it is going to be pretty heavy at the pumps uh, anyways as usual stay safe safe driving we'll see you on the next video cheers